Hi friends, Matt Humphrey here, and welcome to Today's Magic, where it pleases me to be joined by Orlando Pinstripe Post Editor Evan Dunlap, and we've got a lot to discuss before tonight's game against the LA Clippers at Amway Center, but Evan, first and foremost on everybody's mind is Dwight Howard. Last night he said on Twitter that he's annoyed with the quote, stupid rumors that he's already planning to leave Orlando. Evan, how concerned should Magic fans be about Dwight Howard's future in Orlando? Well, the potential for Dwight to leave uh, in 2012 when he can uh, exercise his early termination option to become a free agent. Uh, as Otis Smith told your colleague, Brian Schmitz, um, that potential has been there since the day Dwight signed with the Magic after they drafted him in uh, 2004. It's never a given that he would spend his whole career here and so Otis, as Otis said, he's sort of been preparing for that potential for uh, for seven years, and because really only Dwight knows what he may or may not do, and certainly he hasn't made up his mind just yet. That's very far away, and a lot can happen between now and then. Uh, I think it's probably best for fans to I mean, keep it in the back of your mind because it's it, it can happen, but. There's really nothing uh, fans can do, I don't think, to, to influence Dwight. Um, you know, with, with the, the uncertainty about the collective bargaining agreement, uh, which may include, uh, uh, some of the others might push for it, a, a franchise player tag, as in the NFL, which enables teams to uh, keep players more or less against their will. Um, you know, if, if the new collection of the marketing agreement has that in it, then certainly uh, Dwight Howard with Orlando, Darren Williams in Utah, those guys are going to be sticking around even if they don't want to be here. So um, I, I really I wouldn't fret about it just yet. Evan, how would you compare Blake Griffin's performance this season to Dwight Howard's rookie year? Uh, Dwight and Blake Griffin, uh, interesting comparison. Uh, they're, they're similar in that they're very athletic, explosive uh, big men, but certainly uh, Blake's career has gotten off to a hotter start than Dwight has, uh, averaging 23 points, 13 rebounds, almost four assists per game, uh, whereas Dwight had a, a solid but um, less spectacular rookie year with uh, 12 points and 10 rebounds. I think the biggest difference between the two is the role. Uh, Griffin has come in as a rookie, and he's taking 17 shots per game. Uh, Dwight got less than half of that at 8.3 attempts per contest. He was on a team with, with Steve Francis, uh, so the Magic didn't really need him to, to generate offense, whereas Griffin uh, is really the, the Clippers' go-to guy, especially with uh, Chris Kamen hurt and Eric Gordon hurt as well. Um, he's their only option, whereas Dwight was more of a, a secondary option. You know, Evan, Hito Turkoglu's performance of late has been very troubling to Magic fans. Is it safe to say that as Hito goes, so goes the Orlando Magic? I think it is safe to say that, that Hito is sort of a, a spark for the Magic, and you know, his play is going to really determine a lot of, of, you know, it's going to determine how well they play. Uh, Dwight is certainly the team's MVP. He's their best player. But because his contributions are more consistent uh, with his rebounding and defense, and when he gets the ball, his, his post scoring, you can rely on that from game to game. And that's going to be there in wins and losses. But Hito is a less consistent player. If his jump shot's not falling, if he's not getting his teammates involved, if he's making poor decisions on pick and roll. That has a trickle-down effect and, and um, it affects everyone. I, I would say he's sort of like a Lamar Odom with the Lakers, not necessarily in his style of play, uh, but it, in how you look at, you can look at his, just his stats from a given game alone and sort of get an idea of whether the Magic won or lost or not. It's how Lamar is out there with the Lakers. I think it's very important for the Magic to get him right again. He's been very shaky in his last few games on both ends of the court. 
Evan, thank you for taking the time to join us today, and thanks for providing Magic fans with your insightful analysis on OrlandoPinstripePost.com. Thanks, Matt. It was fun. Hope to see you soon. Tip off tonight, 7 o'clock, Amway Center, Magic versus Clippers. And we'll have coverage throughout the day here on OrlandoSentinel.com. And we'll come back and join you again tomorrow on today's Magic. Thanks again for joining us, everybody.